Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Machete Saint, back with a Blu-ray haul. And right in front of us we have Deadpool 2. The super duper censored cut includes two versions, the theatrical and unrated cut. Let's take a look at the back real quick. The super duper cut. Experience your second time like it's the first time. Oh man. Let's take the slip cover off. Right, and here we have the Blu-ray. Deadpool 2, super cut. This is rated R, not for the kiddies. Next, I picked up a couple of Japanese imports from Bandai Visual. Alright, first we have a Violent Cop, 1989, crime drama. Directed and starring Takeshi Kitano. This is his directorial debut. This movie was pretty badass. Takeshi Kitano, who plays Detective Azuma, who doesn't play around. Breaking protocol and using violent methods when dealing with criminals. While investigating some drug-related homicides, Azuma discovers that his friend and colleague Iwaki is involved in the drug trade. Iwaki is murdered, and Azuma's sister is kidnapped by a sociopathic Yakuza. All bets are off. Nice little Katano flick right here. Here is the back. Let's open a disc. It's the Blu-ray disc. Special features only contains a trailer. Next, we have Sonatine, 1993. Also directed by and starring Takeshi Kitano. This time playing Yakuza Captain Murakawa, who's burned off from living that life, basically. Pretty much his boss sends him to Okinawa with a group of uh, veteran and younger Yakuza that don't seem to get along very well. To mediate a dispute between two other Yakuza clans, Murakawa suspects that this is just a ploy his boss cooked up to have him killed. After Murakawa arrives to Okinawa, his group's headquarters is bombed, and another incident at a bar claims a few of Murakawa's guys. Murakawa and a few of the guys that are left alive escape to the seaside. One of the Okinawans puts them up at an abandoned beach house, and they all decide to wait there until the heat dies down. Just to pass the time, they play Childish Games, Russian Roulette, Bottle Rocket Wars, Topless Young Vixens. You see beautiful cinematic scenes of the ocean and the sand. And the movie turns into like, like a Yakuza on vacation trying to get away from it all. But soon the fun ends. Murakawa gets violent at the end. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, this is definitely my favorite Katano film. Also from Bandai Visual. They went ahead and released a bunch of Katano's films. The actual soundtrack to this movie is badass. Composed by Joe Hisaishi. Right next, from Third Window Films, The Suffering of Ninko. This is a dual format DVD and Blu-ray from 2016, drama, erotic, comedy, period movie, however else you want to describe it. Directed by Norihiro Niwatsukinu, Ninko, played by Masato Sujoka, is a young Buddhist monk who is focused on his duties. Ninko has one problem though, the ladies can't get enough of him. And you know as a monk he has to stay celibate, and he blames himself for this predicament. And with the women constantly just stalking him, it gets to the point where he can't leave his uh, temple, his monastery. And Ninko is especially hard on himself, so he continues to meditate to keep all sexual thoughts at bay. Things get worse after he encounters a mass demon lady who wants it bad. Really bad. After she confronts Ninko, Ninko runs away. During his meditation, he envisions the local townswomen of all ages throw themselves at him, while a half-naked female specter dances to the bolero robin. This drives Ningo crazy, for days. When he comes to, he decides to go on a journey. Later, he comes across a ronin. Together, both of them wind up in a village where a female demon is sucking the life out of men leaving withered corpses. Both Ninko and the ronin volunteer themselves to take on the female demon. Okay, here we go, we got the Blu-ray here. It's the Blu-ray disc. This is just a catalog book, uh, DVD. And here is the back. Special features, interview with the director, and a short film, Strawberry Jam. Definitely enjoyed this one. It's only, it's pretty short. It's only 70 minutes. Language, Japanese, English subtitles, of course. This is Region B. Next, let's move on to the DVDs that I picked up. Also from Third Window Films, we have Underwater Love. Don't mind the sticky note, I had to cover some of the naughty parts that were showing. This is a musical comedy pink film, 2011. It's a Japanese and German co-production. This is directed by Shinji Maoka. We have Sawa Masaki playing as Asuka, a woman in her 30s who works at a fish factory. She's also engaged to her boss. 
One day, a kappa jumps in front of her car. The kappa immediately tells a frightened Asuka that he's the reincarnation of Aoki, Asuka's love interest from high school, who drowned in a swamp. With this movie, you get some wacky song and dance numbers. Oh, and uh, some love scenes. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty enjoyable. And be forewarned, you see plenty of butts and boobies, so don't be surprised. Okay, this is the limited edition with a soundtrack CD. Alright, All right, here we have the back. Be forewarned contains strong sex. Special features, three interviews with Christopher Doyle. Interview with director Shinji Imaoka, alternate camera takes from Christopher Doyle, first look teaser, and theatrical trailer. Let's take a look inside. Alright, it comes with the actual soundtrack of the movie. Pink Musical Underwater Love. And the soundtrack was uh, produced by Stereo Total. They were a civ pop group out of Germany. And here we have the DVD. I had to put another sticky note just to cover some uh, of the love scenes from the movie. So uh, this one was a very, uh, it was an entertaining watch. The next two uh, DVDs are Takashi Miike films. First we have Gozu. It's a 2003 gangster horror film. This is a special two disc collector's edition. Alright, let's get into it. Uh, Yakuza Lieutenant Ozaki, played by Showakawa, has gone off the deep end. So his underling, Minami, is ordered by the gang's boss to take him out. Minami's conflicted by the order given to him. As they are both on the road, Minami stops at a diner. Once he looks out the window of the diner and notices that Ozaki is missing, then Minami is ordered to seek out the leader of the Shiroyama crew in Nagoya to help find Ozaki. A Shiroyama henchman is paired up with Minami. They go to a creepy inn ran by two creepy siblings. Then come a bunch of strange occurrences, lots of breast milk. Lots of breast milk, really, lots and lots of breast milk. And some surreal nightmarish imagery and also a few surprise twists at the end yeah this was very creepy and cringy i i enjoyed it i enjoyed it this is the dvd uh opening this up i actually only broke off one of the pegs so this is loose and this is this too special features and here's the back Special features, special limited edition to disc collector's edition, 16x9 anamorphic video presentation, unrated director's version, nearly two hours of never before seen behind the scenes footage, essay by film critic Bill Gibran, interview featuring directors Guillermo del Toro and Eli Roth, production featurette, I do commentary with film critics Andy Klein and Wade Major. You get a still gallery, trailer, title theme song. Definitely recommend this if you're into Mike's cringy horror stuff. And last, another Mike movie, The Way to Fight. It's from uh, 1996. Action comedy drama. Alright, so the movie takes place in 1970s Osaka. Kazuyoshi Tamai is the toughest fighter in Naniwa West High School. Him and his buddy Toshio, when not getting into fights with delinquent students from other schools, they're working at a ramen shop. Or hanging out with their uh, awkward classmate Ritsuko, who has a thing for Kazuyoshi. And so she was a thing with Ritsuko, but he's yeah, he's a shy guy. And he's not good at expressing himself, and he's not as good of a fighter as Kazuyoshi. And he definitely knows that. He comes across several men beaten to a pulp. He hears that the guy that laid the ass beating was, was Takeshi Yamada from Tenen High School. Then there's sort of like a cat and mouse thing going where they try to uh, fight, but they keep missing each other. They keep looking for each other, but they seem to be like in different places at the same time. I want to say this is a bit of a coming of age story. Right, so some bad stuff goes down. I won't spoil it because I like this movie and I want other people to see it. Right, by the end of the movie, uh, fast forward to the 1990s. Both Kazuyoshi and Takeshi are pro fighters. And both of them are about to have a no holds barred match at the Tokyo Dome. Looks like everyone in town is just crazy trying to see it. And then you also see what becomes of some of the characters in the movie. But hey, everybody, thanks for watching this quick haul. If you like the video, leave a like, let me comment. Let me know if you've seen any of these movies. And also let me know if uh, you're interested in watching any of these. Until next time, this is Machete Saint, and I'm out of here. Peace.